I remember my mother um, being next to me and being told that she had to remove her um, pad. I didn't understand it, and I just thought, why? You know, I, you just, you had to kind of submit because they were occupiers and they had the machine guns with them, and we didn't. And so you had to be quiet. You couldn't really say much or argue. The last time I saw my parents, I was 14, and they sent me on a children's transport, a kinder transport to England. And by sending me there, they literally gave life to me a second time. In 1981, I went back to the camps where my parents had been. The last camp was Auschwitz. When I stood on the spot where the cattle cars arrived and the selection was made, although there's nothing there that could possibly remind me of my parents, that's when I finally accepted there's no way that they survived or that other family members survived. She typed my name in the computer and instantly, like growing out of the, the floor, were two men who identified themselves as um, security. Their name tags were turned around. I was wanded and, pat and patted down, and then I was told to get undressed. And I said, you have no right to do this. So I got undressed and then I was told to bend over, and I was internally searched. And I said, why are you doing this? They said, because you're a terrorist, because you're a security risk. I have never in my whole life been so angry. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Why would you go to such lengths to humiliate someone? This was something done purely to humiliate and for no other purpose. I think that was part of the policy. It was intentional. It was meant to um, make Palestinians detest going back. Teaching us Palestinians a lesson don't come back. It's intimidation, and that's what they try to do, so that we don't report back what we really see. Well, if they don't want the United States or the world to know, then don't do it. When I landed in the U.S., I called my friends in Palestine, and the first thing I said to them is, I'm never coming back. I haven't been back home since I was 10 years old. One of the reasons it is difficult for me to think about going back home to Nazareth is that the thought of being placed in that same position I was in as a 10-year-old and not being able to do anything about it is too much for me. There are these magazines in the back seat. I, on every page, in every one of these magazines, and in the magazines that were in, in, where my friend was sitting, I wrote, I'm a Holocaust survivor. I will never, ever come back to Israel. That's what they want. They want us to get to the point where we don't go back. Thank you.